Willie D. Live. You being a showrunner for some of the biggest shows on television, you being a director, a producer, let's say you was producing the Oscars on, <laughs> on that infamous <laughs> slap night. Will Parker was there, actually, by the way. Will Parker's a black I mean, show. Yeah, a black Will, man was producing Will that Parker night. Will Parker produced it. Yeah, yeah I, he was I know. There. Black, I, there was a black man producing that show. But since Will is not here, I got to ask you. You, you're here. And I'm saying, if you, were he, if you were there, if you were in Will's spot, wow. that was your spot, this is your show, you're producing, and Will come out, I mean, just... Throw a monkey wrench in the whole show by going up on the stage and slapping Chris Rock. Yes. What do you continue to just act like nothing happened and give Will Smith an award later? I mean, do y'all continue to film all of that stuff and I think, allow him it. to sit in the audience? I, and I, Will is my homie. I, 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 I love Will Smith. That's the dude. You know, that's my, that's my yeah, guy. Exactly we have right. we did, we toured yeah, together. Yeah, right. But I mean. I'm just asking from a professional standpoint, what do you what would you do as a director, a producer of the show? Well, um, that's a tough one. Uh, I remember one time I was doing the Vibe Awards, and uh, I think the people have talked about it, but Fifty slapped one of the Fifty Cent slapped one of the members of Onyx. If you can go and if you people know anything about history, and this was in the hallway, I think, and we didn't know what to do, right? And we're like, well, damn. The show. Hold on, who did he slap? <laughs> I'm not gonna get into that. Whoever got slapped by Fifty at the uh, in Onyx, you know who you are. Um, and then later, I produced the Source Hip Hop Music Awards, the TV show. And so, one of the Source Awards got interrupted by a fight. Right, multiple, uh, two of them got interrupted by a fight. I was on stage at that particular time. It was Death Row versus Snoop, because Snoop and Death Row was going back and forth. Suge sent a bunch of goons. They all had on red T-shirts, and the Goons from Snoop from was on one side, and then Dog and all his homies, and they literally ran to the middle of the stage and started fighting on stage. This really happened in real life. We had to stop the show. I'm giving you context to the, the Will situation. We had to stop that show. We went the next day and continued to film, I think it was the next couple of days, because the uh, police, the Pasadena police stopped the show. They was like, it gotta stop because of the fighting, and they just was afraid that all was gonna help break loose. So in that case, the police stopped it. But if I was there that night with Will, I'm not sure that Hollywood would know what to do when a star that powerful and that well-known who's not known for that. I think everybody, I probably was just would have been shocked. Like, did Will Smith just slap Chris Rock? But I'm on live television too, by the way. You understand that I'm not taping something and I, that source of words, I could stop down. That vibe of words, I could stop it, come back in 45 minutes and reassess. So I did what Will did. I probably would have kept the show going. Um, it's fucked because Will got robbed of that moment because he lost his temper. And so do you, uh, I'm guessing, you know he's going to win the Oscar. Everybody knew that he was going to win the Oscar for that. Do you stop this moment, this biggest moment in his whole career because he's just made a mistake? Should he, like the Snoop situation, be the subject of some of those guys got arrested because he just hit someone. That's a felony. You just slap somebody on live television, you got to get arrested. I become a witness now. If I'm Will Packer, I'm a witness to that, right? I've been in situations where I've been somewhere and I was at an event and I saw, this was that death row event with uh, with Quick and this is like whatever. And so Quick and the people were, the guys were antagonizing Quick from the stage. He was a blood in their crypts. They got into a dispute. He jumped off the stage, started fighting him. The guy ended up dying. I saw him get stumped to death in real time. So if I'm Will Packer watching Will Smith, I've now become a witness to a crime. And I think Will Smith got off. He was supposed to go go to jail. If I'm right now, if I get up and just punch Willie D in the face, you call the police, I got to get arrested. Right? I ain't calling the police. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we know that you ain't, you ain't calling no police, and we know you got hands. So I don't think you're going to be doing no snitching. But I'm saying, yes, I think I would have kept the show going. But I, I uh, Will Smith had to pay for that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that was... You know, Chris Rock is an amazing talent, man. But you know, uh, anyway, let's let's, <laughs> let's 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 move on from, from there. No, have you ever had any of those guys that you covered, especially like in hip hop, 
where you had to write an article. Maybe that article was uh, uh, an article where you was bringing them to task. You were calling mm-hmm. them to task. Approach you and say, yo, man, yo, Frank, what's up with that article, bro? Uh, yeah, I mean, I always used to talk about, because what happened was for me to get started in hip-hop journalism was that I was a reporter at the L.A. Times and just so happened during the time of Death Row coming up. And so I started out writing bios for Death Row. I just happened to know Daz and Corrupt. And then I went from that. I met Dave Mays at Columbia and he like put me in touch with the editor. So I was a black man at a white mainstream publication writing about hip hop and then later at The Source doing it. And so I remember uh, a member of the Wu-Tang Clan, uh, the biggest, tallest member of the Wu-Tang Clan, um, Somebody had written something about the Wu-Tang. I didn't do it, but I was with him about to interview him and another member. And he's like, fuck those journalists. Those journalists, they always act like little bitches and whatever else and whatever. And I think they had slapped one person that I know, the members of the Wu-Tang clan. And um, I was like, well, you know, that's not me. And I'm like, you know, I don't take, you know, I'm here just to do my job and tell a story, but ain't nobody going to run up on me, homeboy. And so I think now, it's who different. Got, who got slapped? Uh, a friend of mine, another journalist, had slapped got slapped the by the got slapped by one of the members of the Wu Tang. Right. And so a few months later, maybe not too long later, I was with the Wu Tang, and then they were like those journalists because they didn't really like journalists. I mean, back then, mm-hmm. they didn't. You know, a lot of artists did not like journalists, even though we was there to write about it. If you're from the street, you don't really like want to be like telling your story or being interviewed. We had a different time where everybody's giving all their business out and running their mouth on the internet. But there was a time when the artist there was a there was a uh, distance between the artist and the public and the journalist was the person that brought you their story You didn't have Instagram and Twitter where somebody could DM Rihanna. So yes, there's been times and you know, we ended up nothing happened, but um, I was with Suge multiple times and uh, when Suge uh, Got the probation violation when him and Pac got shot he got out of jail 2001 or he was still in jail at Mule Creek prison and so I went to go visit him there in the day room. And so uh, he he could spill very negative energy. He was talking about Eddie Murphy was a, you know, and then he'd talk about Prince and they all almost, you know, whatever he was saying. And, you know, they're all rats and puffs. You know, he was going crazy on a lot of people. You know, he even mentioned Farrakhan once. And so um, I like, wrote that. Like in a disparaging man? Farrakhan? Uh, and I think that he was just... He was the kind of guy to just to be controversial just on purpose. And I think he thought by being hard or whatever. But I was like, you got so much negative energy, Suge, and you say all these things about these people. And he's like, well, you know, they all gay in Hollywood and they all fucking, you know. And there's a, there was a picture in Death Row, by the way, on the one that used to be on a Santa Monica or San Vicente office. And it was like Buffy and it was a picture of Big and Puff, like having sex and those animals or something like that. And so I wrote this about him. But I took him to task when I was asking him the questions. In the article, I took him to task. I ended up getting some beef at the source with people because they didn't want that out. But I'm like, you don't have the pulpit to say that. Kind of, I, I don't feed into that. And then later, you know, I saw Sugar out multiple times. We finally made some peace. But he did confront me. Yeah. You know, and I was like, well, you said that. And I wasn't, I'm like, he's like, well, why you have to, you know, put that that way? And, you know, I was like, well, you said it. And everybody else is afraid to say something to you. And you told me that. He told me once, he's like, I fuck with you because you're not afraid. But then when I told that truth, he wasn't that happy about it. You know what I mean? Well, clearly, uh, Suge Knight w- at one point was a very, very intimidating person. Uh, and his reputation preceded him. I mean, like, if you have to honestly say, like, there had to be some level of fear of there. Of course, of like, course. on a scale of 1 to 10, what that fear level was. That fear was big, but the only reason I'm saying I knew him already, you understand what I'm saying? Me and him had multiple conversations, and I would I would talk to him in a way, not like, I'm, oh, I could beat Suge up. You know, it's not like he's yeah. big, but I ain't no little guy either. But he, see, the thing is, people think, people like him want to go and be confronted and talk about shit. They, when everybody's just afraid of you, that's not the kind of niggas that he really want to fuck with. He would rather talk to somebody who was like, well, what you feel? What's up? What's your real, you know, going, whatever. So going I think back was, to the white folks I, I and think, the coconuts. I think that there was a level of respect with us where I wasn't trying to denigrate him. But I told him, I am the people. All these people want to ask you questions. I want to know about you. They're never going to get a chance to see the blood red carpet and the piranhas and whatever. So I go and describe that to them. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And so it's my job to ask you tough questions. Did you, were you involved in the murder of Tupac? Did you have him killed? 
was Tupac in a gang. You know, just shit that motherfucker want to know. You asked him that? Yes, of course. Yeah. And what did he tell you? He's like, I never would do that. That's my little brother. I loved him. And I don't think he was a part of it at, by no means. No, neither do 